afternoon, Mr. President. Sorry I've been away so long. I won't let you down again.
This exhibit shows a collection of galvanos, or single-faced designs of coins. These are the five coins of less than a dollar value, which make up the bulk of the mint's output. Coin designs are changed at set intervals, but the size and metal content always remain the same. This is the transfer engraving machine, which reproduces mechanically the design of a large model on a small master die in steel. The sensitive pointer follows the raised figure of the coin to be copied. This is reproduced by the small cutter, which carves out the design as it travels in endless concentric circles. This giant press uses the master die just completed to make many working dies. The blank piece of steel, which will become one of these dies, is in the form of a flattened cone. It is placed in the press, and the stamping die is forced down upon it. The dial above shows that a pressure of 50 tons is forcing the blank and the master together. The press lifts again, and the blank piece of metal has become a perfect die. After being hardened, this die is ready to go to work striking off actual coin. The greatest challenge in producing a collector coin is perfecting the design. This is the design for the silver North Carolina State Quarter. It's based on a photograph of the Wright brothers' first flight. The design has been etched into a piece of hardened steel called a die. The die will strike the design onto the blank. Although the surface looks smooth, it's not smooth enough. Simple cellophane tape will protect the design during polishing. The worker must cut around the design to expose the flat surfaces. If she cuts too deeply, she can ruin the die. To do work this fine, she must train for up to a year. She uses a paste made from crushed diamonds. She will spend up to three hours on this single die. In the end, this simple piece of metal becomes a license to make money. Dyes are guarded in the same way that the nation's assets are guarded. If a die were to go out, it would mean basically uh, that someone else other than the mint um, would have the ability to strike legal tender coinage. It takes two dies to make a coin, one for the head and one for the tail. The dies are mounted in a steel collar before going to the press. Proper alignment is crucial. The head and the tail must face in exactly opposite directions. The slightest mistake in alignment could produce thousands of unacceptable coins. To prevent the dies from shifting as they strike coins, they must be locked down tightly. The orientation of the tail of the coin and the head of the coin is very, very critical. The setting of the die is as important as actually striking the coin itself. The coins are struck on special presses which stamp the head and the tail simultaneously. We can understand the process better by slowing it down. The die for the tail is mounted inside this well. When a blank slides in, the press drives the head die down with over 90 tons of pressure. These silver coins are stamped two times to embed the design. 
Regular coins are struck only once. To survive this tremendous pounding, the eight-ton press contains massive shock absorbers. What happens when the press strikes the blank is actually quite complicated. When the die actually strikes the blank, that pressure builds up tremendous heat on that coin. And that heat literally brings the surface of that metal to a molten state. So it's not so much that the die is striking and pressing into the coin as much as the metal is flowing into the die and that image is really brought up as it were. That's what gives you the the uh, texture, the sculpting, the relief, the difference in levels of the coin. The coin press can produce only 30 silver quarters a minute. The United States Mint makes billions upon billions of coins. We're the largest mint in the world, probably the largest mint that mankind has ever known. Um, we make very few mistakes.